Judaism was over there, early 1920s. He tightens that up with pieces very carefully constructed out of a line of notes from the 12 notes of the chromatic scale, but arranged in such a way that no one note predominates. No one center serves as an orientation point. No one center serves as home. Sorry. carefully organized, some most carefully organized music ever written, fiercely calculated to be permanently away. I feel air from another planet. Now, if you're a music major or ex-music major, you'll know I'm simplifying drastically and you'll be blushing. I'm not claiming for a moment that these composers were drowning in pessimism or had no sense of hope, anything but, if you read Schoenberg, nor that this illustrates some steady decline of music into some dark cul-de-sac of chaos. Anything but, oversimplifications like that are crass as well as naive. But I think what we can say is that these sensitive artists were caught up in turbulent cultural currents, which often unconsciously uh, played out a malaise about endings, a malaise ingrained in much of the fabric of European culture. And the playing out was done in the medium of musical sound. And what of us today? As I've hinted already, in some circles, the suspicion or unease about home with a capital H would seem to be stronger than ever. It's not surprising if a welter of literature has flooded out on the effects on the human self. And most of that literature is a variation on the same theme. Say goodbye, it is said, to the so-called modernist self, the individual self striving out optimistically to create a better future on his or her own. The heroic, self-confident, self-reliant agent who's going to make a difference and carve out the new Jerusalem. Say hello to the postmodern self who strolls the streets of postmodernity in many guises. The commentators speak of the disoriented self. Without a sense of an ending or a shared, stable set of coordinates in the future, it's not surprising if a great deal will destabilize. The philosopher of the ancient world, Heraclitus, sketched what it was to speak of all things in flux, panta rai, all in flux, and contemporary forms are not hard to find. From the soundtrack of Peter Gabriel's show for the London Millennium, Millennium Dome, although written two years ago, his words suddenly, chillingly apt in a way I couldn't have predicted when I first decided to use them. I looked up at the tallest building, felt it falling down. I could feel my balance shifting. Everything was moving around. These streets, so fixed and solid, ah, shimmering haze, and everything that I relied on disappeared. Down, side up, upside down, take my weight from the ground, falling deep in the sky. And all the family looks so strange. The only constant I'm sure of is this accelerating rate of change. A colleague of mine at Cambridge speaks of multiple overwhelming, being full, pulled in a multitude of directions by the bewildering variety of options on offer with a plethora of TV channels to hop around, thousands of brands of goods, trillions of websites. Remember the verbs, chart-topping album, urban hymns, with its multiple recycling of styles, and the line from Bittersweet Symphony, I'm a million different people from one day to the next. The commentators also speak of the plastic self. Without a sense of shared ending, the self becomes a product of roles and performances imposed by society and its own inner drives and conflicts. We learn to change very quickly, slip in and out of roles, reshape ourselves. Kiss goodbye to Jeremy Begbie as a self-integrating rational agent with a central core that makes me, me, and endures through time. No, Jeremy Begbie is the name given to the de-centered self shaped by the multiple forces of culture. Like the ancient figure of Greek mythology, Proteus, who changed his shape in a flash, significantly in order to avoid telling the future. And yet another image, the fragmented self. Without a sense of ending, very often continuity will begin to dissipate. Past, present, and future will tend to fracture. Bauman, who I mentioned earlier, writes a book a number of years ago about our times called Life in Fragments, about a culture where jobs for life have all but disappeared, when professions have the habit of appearing from nowhere and disappearing without notice. The ethos of the weekend fling, 
fleeting and flirting, where we can only handle a night or a day at a time. Only micro hoax, micro endings, not mega endings. And I suppose it's not surprising if many of us will retreat into the present in these circumstances, the so-called isolated moment, the moment of the quick soundbite, the photo opportunity, the moment of the flickering image on the screen. Of course, all this can be huge fun, people will say. Quite right, it can. The gentle fun of multiple ironies, the fun of hopping from one sexual experience to another, one dot com to